This one's gonna go big! Hello and welcome back to the channel. We're gonna have story time today. It's not one of my stories, it's a story that was passed to me. Basically, somebody approached me with this and said, I think this would make a pretty good story for your channel. It's someone who watches the channel, someone who I am aware of through the Fruit Machine and Fruit Machine emulation scene. I don't kind of know him. If you, if you put me in a room with him, I couldn't point him out, but he's been around for a long time, so I, I kind of know him online, if you will, and I've got no reason to believe that this, this story is anything other than the truth. He pitched it to me and said, I think this would make a, a decent little tale for your channel, so he, he kind of get, gave me the gist of it. I thought, yeah, okay, that, that'll make a, some decent content for the channel, so we exchanged quite a few messages back and forth, getting the details of the tale and I'm now going to present it to you today but just to make it clear this is not something that I did or that happened to me it's something that was related to me and as you've probably guessed based on what we've got this on the screen in front of us and indeed what I'm going to call the video when it goes up on YouTube it is to do with the cross-channel ferries specifically the Dover to Calais ferries at around this time as with a lot of these things, it's, it's lost to the sounds of time a little bit, but our best guess on this one is around 1994. And this is when you had Stenner and P&O P ferries even, that were going 24 hours a day cross-channel from Dover to Calais. Obviously, if you were around at that time in the early 90s, it was, there was very much a consumer boom going on. Huge amounts of freight. You know, the, the EU single market was, was in full flow. So massive freight travel, massive passenger travel. Of course, the ease of traveling all around Europe, that kind of thing. So these things were running 24 hours a day. There were multiple ferries going, going back and forth constantly, 365 days a year absolutely chocker with passengers and the drivers of the lorries and all that kind of thing and what they had on them were fruit machines and specifically they had club fruit machines because obviously they're not bound by the same laws as kind of pubs and arcades because they're out at sea they're they're not actually in so so where what 94 we would have still been on the what i want to say the six pound jackpot then in the pubs and arcades but we had a 200 pound jackpot in the clubs and these ferries had every loads and loads of ferries with loads of machines on them and it's those machines or a couple of machines in particular that i'm going to be talking about in this video and i will show you in the emulator exactly what was done to them so here are the two machines that we're talking about they're basically clones of each other are very very near to being clones they're both by JPM, they're both club machines, they are very similar but they have a slight difference in that Wall Street here on the right hand side has a kind of gamble on the high-low reel, Hell's Bells just has a straight um, gamble up the trail with a loose, just kind of, kind of dapple thing, but beyond that they're identical and that doesn't matter because we're not actually going to be using that for for the method that was done on these machines in the ferries so for all intents and purposes for the intents of what we're interested in for this video these two machines are clones images of them are very very thin on the ground i can only find an image of hell's bells so you can see hell's bells over on the left hand side there standard system 5 a jpm cabinet of the time these are system they're both system 5 machines you can see their four real club machine that one's on 150 pound jackpot but they were on 20p 200 pound jackpots and that's the stake and prize combinations that were to be found on the cross channel ferries back in around like i say we're going to say 1994 for this and just for a little background on this, this was the era of plugging uh, slash sparking. I have made a couple of videos about this on the channel before. There's this one here from, crikey, nearly three years ago now, Maygase Deluxe Monopoly. There was also the one there for Barcrest Blue Moon. Uh, I haven't tended to do too many videos about these. There were a whole load of machines. In fact, it's probably easier to list machines that weren't vulnerable to this the machines that were by all the major manufacturers, JPM, Mega, Ace, and later on, I think systems were found to do it on Barcrest as well. 
all kind of amounted to the same thing, which was turning the machine off and turning it back on again at a critical point, usually when a win was being added into the bank. From memory on Deluxe Monopoly, what you tried to do was get a jackpot, and then just as it was finishing, counting the jackpot up into the bank, you'd turn the thing off and turn it back on again. It, when it had done its reset, it would pay the win out, but it wouldn't account for the win. The machine would get happier and happier, and you could empty it. Blue Moon there, that was a that was a slightly different variation on the theme, but it, it fundamentally amounted to about the same thing. And the reason that I've not gone on and made more videos about plugging and sparking was because, like I say, they, are, they, they do kind of come to the same thing. So... The, the number of videos on the channels about this aren't, aren't necessarily commensurate with how widespread this was. And, and the guy who told me the story about the ferry said that this was the big thing at the time with play. Sort of 93, 94, plugging and sparking was where it was at. And people who knew about it were going all over the place, plugging the fuck out of machines. But they'd also got to sparking it which is where you use an electric gas lighter. You find a bit of the cabinet, a metal bit of the cabinet, <laughs> you zap the poor fucking thing, and that can cause the machine to reset. And that will, of course, be less visible than kind of reaching down for a plug, you know, reaching behind the machine or whatever to try and turn it off and on. You can zap it with an electric gas lighter, and that can do all kinds of weird things as well to the machine because they're not necessarily used to having, you know, electric shocks put through them. And I've seen many stories on the various fruit machine emulation forums over the years that it could cause them to dump the hoppers, it could blow the lamps, it could cause them to alarm and all sorts of things. So plugging and sparking, they're, they're kind of the same sort of thing. It, it's two different ways to achieve basically the same result. So this was rife. It was going on all over, all over the place. Many, many people... I, did, I didn't have a fucking clue. I was completely oblivious to the whole thing. At the time, I was just a poor sucker going around doing my plums in the machines all the time. But there were plenty of players going around who were plugging and sparking machines. And competition in the pubs and the arcades was getting a little bit hot. And it all comes down to this one person in particular who decided to do something a little bit differently because it was getting a little bit hectic in the pubs and the arcades. He decided to approach it from a different angle. And this guy was friends with a snooker club owner. So he basically had a local snooker club where the owner was happy for him to fuck about with the machines in there. So, sort of after hours or during the day when the club wasn't open, this player was free to go in there and just fuck about with the machines, trying to work something out on them. And he set about these two machines here, Hell's Bells and Wall Street, and he was trying to find out a way to do these machines because the ferries had in multiple instances of these machines of hell's bells and wall street on the ferries there could be five or six units of, of these two machines on a single ferry bear in mind that you've got multiple ferries going backwards and forwards so there were loads of these machines available to him to do so what he tried to do was work out something on this machine that he could do related to plugging and or sparking and he managed to do it so let's just do that. So let's because it works in the emulator, right? I can show you this thing that this guy did in the emulator. You can see there I've got my current session stats. So we've got nothing in and nothing out. We'll put in a fiver to start with, and this is what the guy managed to do. All those years ago, what 27 years ago or whatever it was, he managed to work this out a way to get the machine to do this. And he made it repeatable, and that then gave him something to... So what we'll do, we want to be on the feet. So you see there, we've exchanged from our win... Just dropped win straight in there. We've exchanged over onto the features, and what we're going to do is start gambling up. We're not necessarily going to win every single climb, by the way, so don't worry about that. It can turn... Oh, God, I have a horrible habit of missing this. <laughs> he says, <laughs> help the bonus. There we are. So that'll start us on the feature. You can see there we've just got a high-low gamble straight up there. It can give you all kinds of sketchy numbers, but you'll be surprised at what it'll let you in on. There we are. So that 12 good number. It will stiff you on anything, though. That 1 or a 12 are the... Oh, come on, come on. We've got to get... F oh, you bastard. We weren't a million miles away from where we were there, but we'll carry on going. That's fine. That's just like a 
boost it can hold afterwards all we're trying to do here by the way we just want to win so cherries will do if we can get a cherry is there a cherry up there i want to i can't see a cherry up there how is there not a cherry within four nudges oh no, sorry sorry oh god well done there, oh no it was five nudges just goes to show a cherry will do because we can gamble a cherry once and then exchange but that'll put us in that's fine so we will just count so we just got to start our so any win that's we don't care how low down we are as long as we can get a gamble up the ladder here and, oh you did no need for that really was the it can sometimes take a few pounds to get it it doesn't like I say it can take a few climbs but we sh we should get there and we should be able to make some decent profit on this machine so cherry that's fine all we want to do is gamble once odds or even so we'll gamble oh, we lost we just one gamble will win there it'll gamble from 40p to 80p and then you can uh, exchange over to bank it so that'll do us if, if we can get that a cherry's fine a single gamble on a cherry will do us we'd be happy with that and then we well, we'll hold a one i'm not sure it's the best hold in the world but it doesn't spill over by the way so it doesn't matter if you just fill up the na the uh, wall street name completely there i'll have to put another pound in or if, if, if or if you sort of go way over the top it really doesn't matter so that's fine we'll just take the cherry there we'll gamble odds there we are so we've won one gamble you can see there now we can exchange over so we'll just start gambling up we're just going to go with the odds doesn't matter what number it is we're just going to gamble with the odds so we'll go lower than a seven you can see there we're winning on sevens and losing on 11 so oh fuck we lost on a four there we will just stick with it so one two three four. again we just if we got a cherry up there cherry up there we are that'll do us we've got to win a gamble but so we'll go odds again we'll gamble odds oh evens it can take a few quid There's, oh there we are that'll put us in filled up again and okay this is fine remember we're only like six, six quid in Oh, good one. Well, we certainly can't lose on a one. It can. There's no safe numbers, really. I've seen it. Well, we've seen it already. Fuck me on an 11. Two. <gasps> there was no need for that, really, was there? Oh, there we are. Straight back in with a cherry. So we're going to gamble odds. There we are. You can see here, we're not fucking about. We're not wasting any time here. We're just going all in for any win or filling up the trail gamble and just start getting up the trail we're, we're, we're doing it as quick oh fucking you fucker uh speed is of the essence here by the way because if you think about it on the real ferry you're on a timer cross channel was what only a couple of hours wasn't it so you, you want to be as quick you know it wasn't about uh oh, what have we got cherry right oh i lost the gamble I oh, needed to so time was of the essence here so you know because you're only on the ferry for a limited period of time so it's about making as much possible our two cherries will do us that's fine we can just exchange straight over for that and we're just going to start gambling up again oh you it's been well somewhere between five pound and ten pound i expect it to happen well that's a nice exchange there we are and then up again come on Oh, come on, come on, come on. We're getting close. We're getting close. We're getting close. We're nearly there. We are there. That's what we want. So on the real machine, let's just bring that. It's that one there. Can you see? Crazy reels. We have now gambled to crazy reels. We are going to collect our crazy reels. And let's see what we get. Oh, three bells. That's 20 quid. It usually goes it depends it's a little bit variable what it'll go for sometimes are better than others there's no fixed amount oh that was a really bad one 29 pound 20 that was quite a bad one so well we'll collect it out so we've made a profit so let's collect that out there we are so we'll collect our 29 quid out so we've put eight quid in and we've got 29 pounds out so that you know that's 21 pounds profit it's not you know it's not dreadful but it's not amazing so it's just finished adding up on the meter so we've made 21 pound 20 but that only took us a few minutes however you might say well that's fine degsy but now you've taken the value out of the machine that's no use to you unless you could do it again and you'll notice there that i didn't plug the machine or anything like that so 
what is the point of that? That would only be any of, of any use to us if we could repeat that. And of course, there is a way of doing that. So off we go again. I have reset my short term me uh, meters there. You can see there I've put six quid in again. And what we're going to do is try and do that again. Now, I won't video the whole thing because you've, you've seen what we're trying to do. We are literally... Let's just see if we can win this. I'll, I'll show you one climb, but we're, we're literally just climbing out. And I will tell you that that is what we're aiming for. We are gambling all out for crazy reels, and we are not trying to get past crazy reels. So let me gamble out crazy reels again and see how much it costs. Come on, we're getting there. We're 11 quid in. We're getting there. Come on, a couple more gambles. Come on, come on, one more. There we are. We've got it. So it's cost us 11 quid to get crazy reels. Let's see what it goes for. We had quite a poor one last time. We still won, but that was not a great one, I'll be honest with you. Let's see what we got. It's 20 quid on the bells there. Carry on, carry on. Okay, still going. A little bit better than the last one. Come on, come on. Oh, this is good. There we are, 58.80. And that's conked out at 58 pounds 80. There we are. So that was a, so that was eleven quid in for it for fifty eight pound eighty out. So and that again that only just took a few minutes there. I, I'm not mucking about here. I'm just um, just doing this as quickly as I can. Uh, there's no way it's gonna <laughs> there's no way it's gonna let us do anything again here because the value has been taken out of the machine. So I mean we might if we can gamble up to Wall Street we might just collect it to be honest and just put it in. We'll get a really bad <laughs> rendition of Axel F. Well, that's another £2.60. So there we are. We're actually collecting out. You can see there, genuine short-term meters. There we are. We'll collect that out. So we've actually just made 50 quid. So we made uh, £21 on the first one. We made 50 quid on that one. We've made £70 there in just a few minutes. You've seen there kind of the high end and the low end. The crazy reels. If, it, if you get a shit one, it can do about 25, 30 quid, something like that. At the high end, it'll do about 55 quid to 60 quid, as we saw there. That's about your pay range for Crazy Reels, which, as you can see, falls pretty neatly in the range of, of the actual exchange points. First one was a bit shit. The second one was, was pretty nice there. Now then, I'm sure some of you either, well, either know what the, the, the trick was with this one or you've worked it out from what I've shown in the video this far. There is one element here that I can't actually show in the emulator, but I can simulate. Because what this guy did, really, he, he managed to find a way that you could zap it in such a way that, was, that when it was restarting, you could force a factory reset on it. Now, it wasn't when the money was actually adding up into the bank. You, you let the bank add up normally, and then you collected it out. However, once it was back in attract mode, like it is here, you then zapped it in a particular sequence. So you'd zap it once to get it restarting, and then you'd zap it again and again at a particular time, and there was a particular sequence of zapping it that once you got good at it, you could do it really quickly. And basically, in the space of 45 to 60 seconds, you could have the machine factory reset. And the key point is here that from a factory reset, this machine, as you've just seen here, that those two climbs that I've just done, I did a factory reset on it. And within about five to ten pounds, it will let you climb it out to crazy reels. Now, in the emulator, we can simulate what this guy did by just pressing the clear RAM button there. So we, we press clear RAM. Watch the cash pots, by the way. They have climbed up a little bit. And this is the um, this is what the guy was saying to me. That the easy way to tell if you've managed to do a factory reset on it is that the cash pots will reset £25 for the reserve and £50 for the main cash pot. And you will see that straight away. So if you see that at £25 exactly and £50 exactly, and you also get that telltale alignment of the reels there, you then know that the machine has had a factory reset and you then know that that machine has probably got about 50 pounds of profit in it. So you do what you what I did in the video. So from this factory reset, 
you as quickly as you can you just gamble out to crazy reels you collect the crazy reels you take your profit from that you know which is going to be anywhere from from sort of 20 to 50 pounds only takes a few minutes you then do your zappy 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 and then you force a factory reset on the machine you can do it quickly you can do it discreetly with your gas lighter you've got a factory reset machine and then you just repeat this until you've emptied it or not completely emptied it because you don't want a kind of tube alarm thing guy who told me about the story said that these things held about 300 quid so you could make a you know if you think about it you could maybe make 230 240 pounds of profit out of a single unit you leave it with a little bit of money in it and then you move on to the next one these ferries had five or six of these wall streets or hell bells they had five or six of them so you could maybe do many hundreds of pounds per ferry now i have tried to do the factory reset in in the emulator by the way because what you can do is, is load the machine back in so if we load the machine back in there and as, as it's restart what you can do is you can press because i've just done it there i've just done it control line we don't actually be able to see if it's worked or not here because the cash pots are actually on reset but i did spend some time playing around with this when the cash pots weren't on reset and it wasn't on reset reels and i can't get it to do it by just resetting the machine in the emulator i've tried it all kinds of different ways and it just doesn't seem to happen for me so i guess it's something to do uh, specifically with sparking it obviously there's something going on with the spark with that extra electricity from sparking it which is different from just turning it on and off which is what resetting the machine in the emulator simulates so this guy you had to do it he worked out the method to do it with his sparker and he was able to force a factory reset on both wall street and hell's bells and then he set about the ferry so so what that allowed him to do there were two things going on first of all players who usually did the ferries had kind of abandoned them for the time being because there was such juicy pickings to be had in the pubs and the arcades but this guy thought okay there's a lot of competition in the pubs and the arcades the ferries are a little bit quiet because the usual players are now doing the pubs and the arcades and i've worked out this thing for myself on wall street and hell's bells which other people aren't doing so he decided to seize this opportunity to get himself on the ferries to get himself on the dover uh, calais ferries and he spent a few weeks just just going back and forth to and from france hitting every single ferry that he could that had these wall streets and hell's bells on them now i don't know how much money he made it was certainly many thousands i we you know we, we don't have a figure on this to give you but just to give you an idea one thing that i did found was the um nationwide wide house price index and can you see there q1 1994 50 grand would buy you a house Fifty thousand pounds would get you a house in 1994 so i don't know i mean i'm just finger in the air let's say the guy made 10k off this he's a fifth of a way towards buying a house but he didn't do it for very long because there were two things going on he, he knew that the players the pub and the arcade players who had temporarily decided to leave the ferries alone would be back before too long and he didn't want to be seen doing what he was doing and obviously there was a limit to how much you could get away with it without drawing attention to yourself now obviously a ferry is a good environment in a way because people tend not to be it's not like in a pub or an arcade that was the other thing that the guy said to me is it was also getting tricky in pubs and arcades because in lieu of re-chipping the machine so that the the plugging and the sparking didn't work the message had gone out to all operators of machines and to pub landlords to arcades and that kind of thing keep an eye out for funny business with your machines particularly keep an eye out for machines that look like they're just powering up or machines that you see that are turned off and then they're back on again because that means someone's fucking you with your machines and they're doing this plugging and sparking thing so there was a little bit of heat going on in the pubs and the arcades as well whereas if you think about it on a ferry no one really gives a shit you've got all these people milling around that the crew of the ferry aren't particularly invested in the machines so you can get away with this to an extent you're not going to get the same sort of heat that you might get in a pub or an arcade if somebody happens to clock that the machines constantly seem to be switching themselves off and on again so this guy got in he made as much money as he could 
in a short period of time and he got out again and by all accounts he cleared a pretty decent chunk of cash off it. And the other thing is that they did get played as well. You can see here, and even in this video, that these ferries were busy. They were full of passengers and they were full of people who, you know, drivers of the freight, all that kind of thing. So there were plenty of people on the ferries. And I can, I never went on a cross-channel ferry. I've never been on a cross-channel ferry, in fact. But one thing that I can tell you about is the ferries that are to and from the Isle of Man because I spent quite a bit of time on this boat here which serviced the Isle of Man from, I think it was from 1990 to, there we are, yeah, Kingory, 1990 to 1998. Now that is a relatively, uh, where's the picture? There it is, that's a relatively small boat compared to the cross-channel ferries, obviously, but that, that ran to and from the Isle of Man. Now when I started going out in Mrs. Dexy, that was 94, and I didn't move here permanently until 96. So I did a lot of journeys to and from the Isle of Man on that boat, on the Kingory. And that had a lot of club machines, even a relatively small boat. And I was thinking about this the other day. How many machines that boat had on it? How many club machines it had on it? And I reckon that boat must have had about 20 club machines on it. If, if you can believe that, it had about 20 machines on it. Uh, the reason being, I guess, was that they, they are, you've got a captive audience. If you think about it on a ferry, if, if you're just stuck on a ferry, there's not a huge amount to do. So it doesn't really cost anything to sight the machine. So you may as well have the machines there just sitting there making money. And there was like, even on the King Gory there, there was like a proper little arcade section where they maybe had eight, nine, ten machines, something like that. And then just elsewhere on the boat, anywhere that they saw or had space for a machine or two, they would have just put a club machine. I remember they had that Mike Reed's Big Night Out, the club machine on there. Some of those BFMs of the time, was it oh, Pharaoh's Gold or Cash on the Nile or whatever it was. All those club machines, uh, they had a Super Blackjack Club on there. I remember that on that ferry. So even on a small boat like that, I, I, I would say it would be a reasonable estimate to say that that boat had 20 machines on it. And they did get played. They did see a decent amount of action. So scale that up to like a cross-channel ferry here. The size of one of these boats and the number of people on them maybe getting a little bit bored just looking for something to do. You know what? I'll just put some money in the machine. So that meant, because that was one of the questions that I asked this guy, well, well, surely you can only do the machine once and then the tubes are kind of low and then he can't take any more money out of it unless it gets refilled. And what the guy pointed out to me was that these, these things got played all the time. They were getting money in them all the time. So you could kind of drain most of the cash out of it, just leave it without, you know, without alarming or anything. And then, you know, by the next time you got on that boat, there's a pretty good chance that the machine would have been played enough to, to have some money in it again to take out. So I did cheat a little bit in the emulator in that, in that I did try and I can't actually get them to do a factory reset purely from resetting the machine. That was something specific to the actual zapping of it. Both of them are em emulated. They do play exactly the same. I'm using Wall Street here because this is a new release for the new version of the emulator. So that works perfectly. This one here is running in uh, the old version 3.2. That's an old Bugs and Trouty that will lay out that one. So that suffers from the problems of um, scratchy sound and it doesn't run at quite the right speed. Uh, I could convert it over to running the new version of the emulator, but honestly, uh, differences on, on the gambler side, they are basically the same machine and they both work in exactly the same way. Is that if you can force a factory reset on them, which this guy could do with his zapper, once you've got a factory reset, climb it out to crazy reels, collect your profit, force a factory reset on it, rinse, wash, repeat until you've taken all the money out of one machine, move on to the next one. Once you've done all the machines on a ferry, and you can see there the time it took me, two hours, if it's two hours for a crossing, so if you've got two hours on the machine, that would be enough time. Even if the, machi if, even if the uh, ferry had six machines on it, two hours would be enough to do all six of them, and then you just move on to the next boat. You, you kind of work out which boats have got these things on them, and then you just cycle through them, 
taking the money out and this guy the absolute the absolute textbook definition of making hay while the sun shone whilst everyone else was busy off fighting over the pubs and the arcades and there was quite a bit of heat around that as well because operators were looking out for it this guy saw his opportunity to get a clear run at the ferries for a relatively short period of time but made many many thousands of pounds in the process and you can do it yourself it's easy enough to do in the emulator you just in the new version there you just press the clear ram button you'll know when it's been done because you'll come back to those two cash pots exactly 25 and 50 quid you'll have the treble bars above the uh, wind line there and you should fire sometimes it goes a little bit sooner than others sometimes it can just take a few more quid but generally speaking between five and ten pounds it will just let you gamble out crazy reels and you'll see anything from sort of 20 odd to 50 odd pounds on that it will not let you gamble past that by the way there is absolutely a block from crazy wheel uh, from crazy reels to wall street that is where you must collect it on the crazy reels and of course the way as i said the way this guy was able to work this out was he basically had a friendly club owner of a local snooker club who just let him fuck around with these things until he'd managed so he had, he had a safe territory to try it out and once he'd perfected the technique he then he knew exactly how to do it so he took it straight out onto these ferries and you can see the size of these boats look at the size of these boats compared to the little king gory there that used to run to and from the isle of man it was decommissioned back well it, I think it was sold it went somewhere else in the world but it ran to and from uh, the isle of man from 1990 to 98 but if a if a machine if a, a boat of that size has 20 machines on it you can imagine how many machines a boat of that size and you can see they're passing each other in the channel as well there were multiple ferries running back and forth the channel tunnel i think had just about got up and running at this point but really all travel to and from france was via these ferries there were many of them and they were running 24 7 so you can imagine there was some pretty good money to be made from these two machines particularly if there were multiple units per ferry so there you are then i will leave that one there just a little bit of a story for you i uh, hope you enjoyed it and i will get back to normal fruit machine emulation in, in due course but when, when that guy sort of told that story to me i, th I thought that'll make a decent little tale for the channel so Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and I will catch up with you next time. But for now, as ever, it is goodbye.